just going to show an example now of creating a new part number. So I'm going to go into functions and database and I'm going to get straight into the list there and I can see all the part numbers. I can view this either by goods group or by manufacturer, whichever I prefer. I'm going to open up a browser and I happen to have found a component which I want to add to the database. So I'm going to take the part number and I'm going to put it into a new type. So it's the one with the star. And I'm going to take the description See if I can copy that. And then I close that down, unfortunately. Let me just go back into that. So, in there. And I'm going to type the manufacturer until I make an ink. And I'm going to then go to the goods group and say what goods group or what type of component this is. I'm choosing lamps and indicators. If either of these are not in there, then we can always go to add for goods group or manufacturer. Once we've added a new part number, a new type, we will see underneath a list of parameters. These can be customized by going to functions and settings then choosing which of these are displayed as a default when you create a new part number. And it's a big long list, you can pick the items that you want to see automatically. So in this one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fill in some of the information. I'm going to say what the, um, what the supplier is. So I'm going to go down to supplier and say this is RS components. I'm going to put some basic descriptions. I can scroll down and put the color perhaps. And I could also put the actual stock number, the order number. Let me go to the order number and just paste that in there. An important aspect here is that we can also link this with the um, schematic symbol or the cabinet layout symbol that we'd want to, to represent this with. So under define channels, it shows you a little folder and you can then search for a symbol to represent this. If I do a quick filter under the symbol lamp, I can close down a couple of these until I find the one I'm after, which is this lamp symbol from the EN61346. The default here is a letter P, whereas with the old 60617, the previous one, the default was a H. So that's the main difference between those two. I can put the list of connection points. I'm going to put this as being X1 and X2, and just say, use these two connection points. The same connection points can also appear for a cabinet layout symbol. Here we can either search for a symbol or in this case I'm going to type D for diameter and put this as being 30 millimeters. I'll put these connection points and in fact I could just say that this is a component symbol. So we've now got the part number in there. That's all we need to do for that one part number. We can now go to close and if we have a symbol which is already on the page we can double click search for the part number and we can then perhaps go in by goods group or whichever method look for lamps and indicators and we should find a, a symbol in there another method we can actually go to the dialog for components so under home components we can switch this on and off and we can now do a search on this or we can scroll down and go into telemechanique lamps and indicators and it shows us what the symbol should look like and straight away it gives us the right terminal markings as well. Here we can see it's got the right type information. Very quickly we can now go to the graphical lists and we can go to for instance a parts list simple, generate this and we should see, if we extend this and open this report, that we've now got the correct information there for the manufacturer and description and so on. As well as this we can now go to the cabinets, click on new, create a new cabinet and then we should find actually I've just noticed on the graphical list there, if we just go back to that quickly that the manufacturer and description are actually missing, what I need to do and functions and database is actually just update the parts information I did actually enter the part number and save it and then went back and modified it so if we just generate that again just to show the information we can see that's now got the full description of information in there and back in the cabinets, we can now go to functions, pick list, and we can see these parts, which we can now place on the drawing. Also notice that in the component dialog, the symbol can be placed dynamically. We can assign a new number, and we've got that device in there as well.